Welcome to season two of Guardians of Gaia, connecting people to planet Earth, our collective home where all life exists in a common ecosystem. I'm Megan Edwards and we will explore the environmental world and learn how people are trying to save the planet and fight the system that is killing it. In our previous episode, we found out about how climate change impacts South Africans and ways to adapt to the changing environment like ending fossil fuel mining industries. Now we know that the coal industry is a mainstay of the South African energy sector, providing 70% of electricity and energy power generation and making us the 14th largest emitter of greenhouse gases in the world. The destructive and deadly impact of the industry is not limited to the environment and the health of people, like the land as well, water and the air, but has an economic impact on our livelihoods as electricity costs continue to rise. So stay tuned on Cape Town TV as we explore clean energy in South Africa. The struggle continues. If you or someone you know in your community are doing their part in the fight against climate change, or if you wish for us to come and tackle a very specific environmental issue in your community, then please email us at gog at capetowntv.org. In this episode, we're speaking to people from the environmental justice movement to hear about their struggles and victories for a clean, healthy and affordable energy sector. Civil society is coming together in a movement calling for an end to fossil fuel mining, including nuclear and gas called dirty energy. People are demanding environmental justice and renewable, clean energy, but how do we do this and protect jobs in the industries that depend on dirty energy? Let's look at how fighting climate change is about power. Our fight against climate change is a battle over power. But not only the kind of power that runs our cars or keeps our buildings warm. We need to take back the power that the fossil fuel industry has over society. Fossil fuel companies are the wealthiest and most powerful corporations on the planet and their core business model threatens all of us. For decades, they have corrupted our governments, ravaged our planet, and treated the atmosphere like an open sewer, while the impacts of climate change devastate the people who've done the least to cause the problem. We believe in a sustainable and prosperous future, which is socially just and economically fair. Our mission is to inspire, train and mobilise people to bring power back to citizens and create a thriving global movement. To put the heat on the fossil fuel industry, drive our leaders to act and create the climate solutions the world needs. We will confront the power of the fossil fuel industry, dismantling their social licence and stopping their projects on the ground. We will also continue to work locally with communities affected, supporting those responding to climate disasters and working to promote investment towards community-based sustainable initiatives and renewable energy projects. We will keep targeting and pressuring local and national governments to take action on reducing emissions. But we need everybody. No matter where you live, there are ways to plug in whether it's joining our campaigns online, organising for climate action in your community, or joining a mass mobilisation to move beyond fossil fuels and to a clean energy future. There's room for everyone in this growing movement. Together, we can create a new kind of power. Looking back at history of the struggle for clean energy, in 2014, South Africans discovered a nuclear energy procurement agreement with Russia, 
shocking citizens because no proper parliamentary channels or public participation processes had been followed. So let's watch how two organizations, Earth Life Africa and SAFSI, work to stop the corrupt nuclear deal on Cape Town TV Channel 263. Good must always triumph over evil. I think it's like when you come up against bullies. At a certain point, you actually say, enough is enough. We are shown on TV every day how the, the political parties fight each other and how the opposition stand up and shout, but nothing changes. So. I think people eventually get a bit tired, but if you really sit down and look at it, there's an easy solution. It's within the grasp of ordinary people. So let the politicians go on shouting, but actually let's get down and make a difference. Everybody felt that we must stop this deal because it's basically ruining the future of South Africa. We have a democracy, we have a constitution, we have rules and the people who were pushing this nuclear deal seemed to feel that those rules were simply things, options that you could just put aside when you just want to go off to something. And so I think it was basically people said, no, it's, we're going to stand up to the bullying. It's something that bothered a lot of people who we spoke to. You're working from a, from a principal position so you do what's right, and um, hopefully the universe works in your favor. We would be sitting with in debt to the Russians for a trillion rand, and the places where the money should be going into development of people is not happening. So one trillion rand can go a long way. You know, it's add 500 rand a month to all of the people getting social grants for 10 years. When we started to look also at how nuclear gets procured and the subsidies and the interesting, should I say, financial arrangements that come up, then we started to look a bit more closely. And I think the trigger was when, which was way back in 2014, is when the Minister of Energy then signed that deal with the Russians and the Russians sort of publicised it on their website as a great thing. And we found out Earthlife broke that story because there was a Russian activist in town and he read the Russian. And then the South African government immediately denied it and suddenly it vanished off the Russian website and it was, no, 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 there's no deal. So that, I think, was a big red flag. It's like, there's something going down here. Yeah? We put in access to information requests to government to find out what was happening you know, did Treasury know anything about this in the beginning? And all of those requests and all of that paperwork helped to strengthen the case. So by the time we got to the courts and by the time we felt that the only sort of way forward now was a court case, we were well prepared. And that enabled the lawyers to actually then take that case and, and make it a very strong one. relying on sort of outdated policies. From my layperson's view, I was like, well, I don't really see how they're going to argue this. When we were sitting in court and listening to the government lawyers, it was very difficult to, to see what their points were. It was over so quickly. There were four points to that judgment. And as we went through, I was like, OK, that, wow, we've got that one, and that one, and that one. And the fourth one. And so I was, you know, very excited. What was somewhat surprising was the government's response, which seemed to be uh, taken aback that they had lost. It wasn't just a victory of two small organizations. This was a victory against bad process, against bad governance, and therefore a victory for the people of South Africa.
the question is now we all have to remain vigilant and everybody should get involved now. People mustn't believe the story that they're powerless. We do live in a democracy. We have the right to stand up. We have the right to protest. And so people must use it. There are a number of organizations in this country that if you think that legal action is the only way to stop this corruption, that you will find partners. You know, in the Legal Resource Center, which helped us with the nuclear case, the Center for Environmental Rights also looks at things. There's Corruption Watch. There are lots of NGOs with a bunch of lawyers who can actually get on board. They may have the legal team, but you, they need the backup. They need you to actually go and look for facts and figures and bring it to them. So what we really need is active citizens. You don't have to be some big organization. Everybody can play a part. A great victory for civil society in 2017. However, the threat of nuclear deals has not gone away. Up next, we speak to Liz McDade from the Green Connection about the continuing struggle against dirty energy. Stay tuned with me on Guardians of Gaia, connecting people and the planet.